Hi, I'm Paul Marcel. Now, today what I'm going to be working on is doing an upgrade to my Performax 1632 drum sander. So, of course, this video is completely out of left field compared to all the other regular woodworking videos that I'm doing. But I thought, there's a couple interesting things about this upgrade that I'm doing that you might even like to do it yourself. And also, it'll give you a chance to see how the drum sander works on the inside to see that it actually is the most trivial machine you've ever seen. But also, it's very easy to do some repairs to. So at least if uh, there's a problem with your drum sander, uh, you'll have already seen what it looks like on the inside, and I'll point out how it works. So the story goes that I had a chance to buy a nice planer from a friend of mine, and he also had this drum sander for sale as sort of a combo bundle. So I went ahead and I grabbed it because he really babies all of his tools. So of course, that's who you want to buy it from. Now, this model here happens to be like one or two minor revisions prior to the introduction of the SandSmart. If you don't know what the SandSmart is, it's a system where when you put stock on the drum conveyor belt here and you're running it through, if the motor starts to take more amps than you know it's supposed to be drawing, which is 15 amps in the case of this 110 version, then it'll automatically slow down the conveyor belt until it, it meets that maximum speed that you could possibly feed it through without tripping the breaker. So it's kind of cool in a sense that if you were running some stock through like a panel and you're needing to take it down a little bit, or if you just did the glue up, you know, and you got some ridges, so you're actually being a little aggressive, you might just crank this thing all the way up to 100%, put the board on, and let it back off to the maximum speed possible. So that's actually kind of a nice feature. Other than, like what I normally do, I keep it a little on the low side to make sure I don't pop it. Because if you pop the breaker while you're running a drum sander, it's really bad. In the sense, uh, not so much for the motor, but for the stock. Because your stock will stop, but the drum is still spinning for a long time because of momentum and you'll end up getting just a nasty burn and usually you even get a pretty good piece of snipe right there. So it's not something you want done. So that's what I'm doing to mine is I'm, I've purchased a new controller for it. So I'll be replacing this controller here with the version that has SandSmart in it. So I'll show you that and I'll show you what the differences are on the circuit board so you can even see just how trivial the thing is and you know how, how it works. If you ever blew apart, you'd know what to replace. And uh, I'll also be fixing this uh, power switch that uh, somebody got clumsy with a board. I'm not sure who. Uh, the other thing I'll be doing is one of my neighbors, actually, before I had this one, I had this model. So, yeah, yes, I actually have two Performax 1632 drum sanders. That's going to be resolved here soon. This model here I picked up from a neighbor. It's been through a lot. It's one of the original Performaxes, so this is pre-jet. And uh, it's got a lot of little shortcomings. And one of the things I wanted to do is in the process of upgrading this controller, basically this entire box would be a throwaway part after I do the upgrade. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it on this older Performax because this one here, uh, when I got it from them, the power switch was a little bit finicky. And instead of replacing it, I simply wired past it. And you know, just when I plug this in, I plug it into a power strip. So I use that to turn it on and off. Uh, the, the knob is missing for setting the speed, although that's pretty trivial to set the conveyor speed. So there's just a lot of little things wrong with this controller that moving that one over here will be pretty nice. And then I could resell this to somebody, you know, as long as they know what's gone on with it. I'm not going to hide that. One of the other things that's interesting is on the, on the jets, there's a 4-inch dust port on the top of the uh, drum. And I'll show you these parts in a little bit closer detail in case you've never tinkered with a drum sander. So you can see you have a four inch dust port here. It's not so much uh, the original Performax though at only a two and a half inch dust port. Now it isn't so much that there's a volume of dust that's produced out of here. I mean obviously if you're sanding a panel at 16 inches wide and you're doing it kind of aggressively, you're going to generate a lot of dust. Certainly you're not going to generate more dust than this port could handle. The main thing that you really, really want on the drum sander though is you want a lot of air moving. As that air is going by, it's cooling this drum. And it's noticeable that on this drum sander here, after I switched from, you know, when I got this one, and I switched from this one, I could burn stock so easily on this older model just because of the heat buildup on the, on the drum because it wasn't getting cooled enough by the airflow coming through this two and a half inch port. Whereas on this four, uh, I really don't have any problems with burn. Uh, un unless, you're, unless you hit some glue or something like that, then you get a burn streak. So I'll go through and I'll show you a few of the parts along the way between these two systems, and then I'm just going to do the rewiring and uh, give it a bit, bit of a fast tour. 
So I brought you in a little closer to see some of the parts of the drum sander as well as what it is that I'm going to be replacing. And on my blog entry that's going to go along with this video, I'll have a list of all the parts that are necessary to order through Jet's replacement part program uh, for this controller that's down here. Now, the controller that we're replacing is just literally this box. Uh, the motor that's on the side remains with the drum sander. We'll be removing that and just putting it back on. The only reason why I needed to buy the newer box, if you don't have a sand smart, you're going to end up needing to buy this metal case as well, simply because as you can see, the one that's for sand smart is a lot larger. Well, if I can, if I can hold that together, you can see that it's a lot larger. Uh, what it has to do, and you'll be able to see the controller when I remove it from this box, the controller for sand smart is considerably longer. So this is the controller for a sand smart. Uh, sander. This light here is actually going to be an additional light on the top that indicates when it's throttling back the speed of the conveyor because you've, you're going to be exceeding the, the power requirements. Now if you were to look at this controller on the other side, what you're going to see on the controller that's already in here is it's basically just that portion. This other portion here is the part that does a lot of the uh, logic dealing with the, the ampers that come through. Okay, so I've got you on the ground. Uh, underneath the drum sanders because mine is already attached to the stand and that's a, a lot of work just to take it out so you can see this. This is the underside of the controller. So there was this little white plate on there. After you take off all the screws on the outside, this little white plate normally just fits in those teeth and then it pops up here for a screw to go through. You just pull that right out and you can get at the bottom of the controller. The important part is that this DC motor has a direct drive into the conveyor belt. And you can see that there's a rod here, and then there's a rod coming out of the, the motor, and they have just a coupler in between. And there's basically a set of Allen set screws on there. Uh, just, you know, a little Allen wrench will take care of it. If you just loosen this one up here, then the motor can be detached from there. Now the key is I've taken all the screws off of this box, but you can't remove it until you take that one off. And I know from experience when you take that one off, it pretty much comes off quickly. There you go. So now that we've removed the controller, we can give it a closer look. You'll see that there's not a heck of a lot going on in there. There's that little collar I was showing you that comes straight off of the DC motor to attach it to this drive shaft. And it is, it does have a flat on there. So that's what this registers against. And uh, I did find that I did have to uh, turn on the motor a couple times and stop it because where the Allen set screws were was completely inaccessible. So you just got to give it a couple spins till it arrives somewhere that you can see it. Now, if we look at this controller a bit more, this is the power plug that goes to the wall for the whole unit. If we were to follow this wiring, it goes to the front switch, which I am replacing because I broke it. <laughs> what it does is this just patches power through to this motor in the back, the drive motor for the drum. In fact, this motor here simply plugs into an outlet that's on the side of this controller. So there's no logic there whatsoever. You flip the switch, it sends power to this motor, you're turning it on. In fact, the controller is independent of that. It gets its wire, its power also off of this, but it's not through that switch. So you have to turn on and off the conveyor motor separately, which is actually good. You want it to be able to clear the, the conveyor separately without having to actually run the drum. So it's nice that it's done that way. <clears throat> now, one of the things that you'll find that you'll see on the inside of here is that you couldn't really see much of the wires. I used to have this little plate and they install this plate here basically to keep this thing from ever being able to rub against the wires. Uh, smart move. So if I were to finish giving you a bit of a fast tour of a drum sander, this portion here simply raises and lowers this carriage. And if you were to look at this carriage, it's very, very stout. It's a large plate of metal riding on two large ribs that are on the inside of this, of this stand. And that's actually the same way that it is on the older Performax. So the jet didn't really change that too, too much at all. Now this lid is a nicer lid that it has the four inch dust port. It does have a tendency to catch, <laughs> but uh, the drum itself, is just a very large drum. You just pop a sheet of sandpaper on there all the way across and it has some little clips on the end that you hold. Uh, they say that they claim that you can do it with your fingers. I have no idea whose fingers could actually get in there and manipulate that. So they have this little tiny tool that you use to reach in there and set the clip.
Okay, so the conversion seems to have been a success. It took a little bit of time. There were a couple of wires that were a little harder to get out, and honestly, now I know why a lot of this is manufactured in China. You need really small hands. So the uh, older box, which I have here, <clears throat> I'm now going to move this onto the other drum sander. I'm not going to film that. That's nothing. That's such a, a weird, specific case that uh, nobody else is going to be doing that. Uh, but it turns out that the controller that's in the other one is basically just just about the exact same one as this. In fact, it's made by a third-party company in both cases. So I might even just leave the other one in there and not worry about it. But I do need to fix the power switch, and I have a replacement for that. And then um, uh, I'll probably snap on a new knob on the top of here. It turns out the old knob, the knob that I had for my old one is the same type that's missing off this one here. So if I just do those two, I'll be done with this in no time at all. Now, one of the other things I did get for this older drum sander, and this is something you might consider if you have one of the older Performaxes with a two and a half inch dust port, is you know forget all this other wiring stuff that I was doing, but you can order the replacement cover. So you're gonna get this cover right here, not the rest of it, but just the cover portion. But it comes with the four inch dust port on the top. That makes a huge difference when you're drum sanding to get all that airflow in there, like I mentioned before. Now, it turns out that the hinge is a little bit different on the jet than Jet Performax versus the original Performax. This one here is done very much with just a, a two-piece piano hinge that's in the back. You just have four bolts to put through. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a hacksaw and just remove these portions of the hinge that are for the Jet. You just cut those off and file them smooth. And then the piano hinge itself, actually, they just pierce it right through the plastic. So I'll just do the exact same thing on here, and it'll get me a 4-inch dust port on that older model, and that'll make a significant difference. That in itself is more important than any of the other parts that I'm upgrading on the old one.